Rocky Town, it's a place where dreams are found. We fought so many battles here. Now we're the ones that they will fear. The cup resides within our town. We won't stop no letting down. The cup is ours for all to drink. It's our town, let's rock this ring. Yo! What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Hockey Town Rundown. You are here with us, your beautiful host, Matt, Zach, and Carlo. Boys! What's happening? What's happening? What's going on? Matt, lay down the groundwork. You, you, you were missing last week, so were you, Carlo. But Matt, you can go first. What's going on this weekend, buddy? Oh, man. I, I had a very fun day yesterday. I got to go to the Tigers game for my girlfriends. Very fun game. We beat the Yankees 4 to nothing. Um, I had some real bad beats for all my gamblers out there. They're going to know how I feel. Man, I had Torkelson to get a home run. It was his first game back, boys. His first game back. This dude hits like five foul balls that are like all the way. Like they're a homer if they get on the other side of the line. And he hits a triple in probably the bottom of the seventh, I think. Like Damn. 10 more feet, and I would have won 100 bucks. So Damn. very bad beat, but still, regardless, a very fun time. It was actually probably one of the better Tigers games I've watched. It was honestly pure domination like the Yankees look like crap so yeah it was a really fun game but uh yeah, that's what I had going on yesterday nice little uh Saturday afternoon in Detroit I did uh before you go Carlo I did see something on Twitter it was like a comparison to like the Tigers uh annual salary cost for all their players versus like the Yankees and it yeah, was like, dude, I huge, saw that. huge difference it was unbelievable. Was like, holy hell it was like Crazy. 8 million for the Tigers and like 182 million for <laughs> yeah. the Yankees or something like good god Baseball yeah, definitely yeah. needs a salary cap guy. He's I mean, okay. that is Aaron Judge too. <laughs> hey, that dude, that dude's a phenom. I mean, I'm no, not a big is. baseball guy, but I know a phenom when I see one, and I know he's a big deal amongst yep. MLB and stuff like no, that. He but is. Yeah. So, Carlo, what about you? How's your weekend, buddy? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. I got I got a bit of a shoulder issue. I'm not gonna lie. So I have been uh, laying kind of low. I don't know what I did, but uh, pinch nerve, pulled muscle. It sucks. So it's been a lot of ice and uh, a lot of things that I don't want to be doing, but unfortunately need to be doing, but we're here, we're back. Um, it's been a little while for me, so I apologize to everybody, and I highly doubt you missed me, but if you did, I missed you too, and um, we're back. That's the good news is we're back, so, but yeah, I other really than that, it's been it's been a lot of just uh, taking it easy, because uh, this old man's getting a little beat up right now. My shoulder's tossed. Whew. You, you were too, I think there were two puns. I don't know if they were intended in there. You said shoulder injury, so I'm laying low. You do, and then you there said, we go. Getting, and then I'm getting an old dad mode over here for Carlo yeah. pretty soon, too. Yeah, man. you better get into it. All right, yes, boys. Sir. But so with that, um, I just yeah. want to say real quick, Matt, yeah. you you know, just going back to your Saturday at that Tigers game, how about the weather panning out for you guys there? Because I thought it was going to be a shit show of a day. Oh, yeah, that was the funniest part because like we were kind of like all the way up in we were like in the lower part of the upper level. And I swear it was like every five minutes, there'd just be like a downpour and it would last for 30 seconds yeah. and it would stop. It was so funny. Like I, it was just off and on and off and on, but yeah, it didn't ruin the experience. It was a very fun time. It's always a fun time to see the Tigers play. Oh yeah. Well, not especially, always, especially not when they beat the Yanks too. Play. That's huge. Yeah, no, that, that was a big win for sure. So hopefully we can uh, win that series. I think we got like, the last game today. Yeah. Maybe one of these days we'll all, We'll all talk about every Detroit Red Wings sport. It was fun to talk about baseball a little bit, yeah. but maybe down the road we'll get into it. But, boys, let's go ahead and talk about hockey, Detroit Red Wings hockey in general. And with that, obviously, as you can see below, and based on the thumbnail, hope you guys laughed a little bit at that. We thought that that would be really funny to add in there. So it's going to be a fun um, one today, folks. So it's a mail Yeah, it's a mailbag episode. Pretty much it's the middle of the offseason. No more tighter, no Lucas Raymond news, no Jonathan Bergeron news. We do have Red Wings news. We do have around the league news, but we figured today would be a good filler episode to allow you guys, the viewers, the watchers, the listeners to ask us some questions. And we really do appreciate those that took the time to ask us some questions and put out our thoughts and opinions on what those questions were. And so, yeah, guys, let's go ahead and jump into the Red Wings news. Um, Axel Sandin, Palika, and Michael Branzig Negard start on power play two for Skeleftia. Uh, for I'm assuming it's for like preseason, right? So, thoughts on that, real quick. I think that's awesome. Yeah, I think it's awesome too. Well deserved, you know, those are two of our better prospects. So, it's really nice to see that, uh, you know, at uh, at MBN's age, he's only is he only 19 now or is he 18? 18. 
yeah, he's 18. He's already getting some power play minutes since she left you. So that's that's really cool to see. And, you know, of course, ASP will be running our power play pretty soon. Maybe even as soon as the season after next. Who knows? I'm not here to make predictions right now. But, yeah, it should be a big season out of them. I'm looking forward to see what they can do in Sweden. Yeah, predictions will be on a future episode upcoming. So be on the lookout for that one. Carlo, thoughts on that real quick? Yeah, no, I think uh, I think it's a good thing for sure. I think I saw that... that uh, absolute bomb by by mbn was it yesterday uh and my goodness does he he does have a shot like that was that was wild steve and, and was it was not wrong dude he was pretty sure wrong. it was at the end of his shift too like he looked like he yeah it was you know what i mean so bigger ice you're all over the place you end of your shift and you release a bomb like that like good for you uh but asp i i think we're all equally excited for that guy so let him do his thing let him get a little more defensively sound <clears throat> do what you have to do. And I, I just think it's going to be great when those two pop up, whether it be next year or the year after um, it's going to be wicked for us. Cause that's going to really round things out and fill us out to be, uh, I think it's going to take us over that, that edge. So that's going to be great. So please do your thing there, boys. Good luck. Have a hell of a season ripen up and uh, we'll see you when we see you, but there's definitely no pressure, no rush because um, I think it's what, what they're doing for these two guys development wise, I think is the right call. Um, and I think you're going to see that, you know, when you start watching these guys play and the highlights start coming out, you're really going to see that. So yeah, love it. Love it. I agree. Oh. I agree for sure. Um, and other news in two years, the Red Wings have dropped from third to 21st in the athletic NHL's front office confidence rankings. Thoughts on that real quick. I think that's just rage bait. I mean, like what, what is there to really indicate that they have lost that much confidence? Like I don't, I don't really know what that's about. Like, I, I guess maybe you could say that there's been, um, you know, not every move that's made that's been made in the offseason this hit. The Wallman move was still very confusing. I don't think we'll really ever understand that. But, yeah, you know, they still had a great draft. And, I mean, they weren't super active in free agency, but the guys that they did get, I think, will have a positive impact. You know, Tarasenko, mm -hmm. Talbot will be uh, hopefully a decent starting goalie, maybe backup goalie. We'll see what happens there. And, uh, you know, got some more depth, too. So I don't uh, really don't really see the disconnect in the in the confidence of the front office. But, you know, whatever. That's just me. We're Red Wings fans on this podcast. You know, we're, we're biased to us. Exactly. But, you know, I don't really get it. What about you, Carlo? It's funny you guys you asked that question. I just had this conversation with like one of my close friends who's also a diehard. And um, uh I, I correlate that to the majority of Wings fans just losing patience. Yeah, yeah. But I also think those are the Wings fans that maybe don't realize what the UFA pool looks like next season. Those are the types of fans that maybe don't realize how much money we have going into that UFA next season. Because ultimately what I do think is that when we get to next offseason, and if Eiserman does make that splash – you're going to see this athletic report come out and Steve Eisman and the Detroit Rebels are going to be the number one. And mm -hmm. I think it's all reactive based right now. I think the fact that we are very much kind of the same team as we were last year, give or take, um, it kind of uh, forced a bit of a reactive move with most Wings fans when I think they saw that article come out with the ability to vote and they naturally just gravitated towards a lower score because they didn't get what they wanted. But when you look at the big picture, um, I, I really think you're going to see that go right back up when Eiserman does make that splash or hell, even if the Red Wings, dare I say it, make the playoffs after this season. You know, maybe they finish with 91 points again. Maybe they finish fifth in the Atlantic again. That's all very possible, in my opinion. I, I think that's kind of where we are. But that maybe we make the playoffs this year, finishing the same way we did last year. I mean, there's a lot that goes into that, but I think that alone, boom, you're going to see people react to that and then vote. So I think these these articles, like I love The Athletic, but I think that is a very, you're really tugging on the heartstrings of people when you put that out. And I think it's a very reactive response you get. And I think that it's going to swing like crazy um, as we enter this season, wrap up the season. Hopefully we're playing postseason. But then going into that UFA, if someone come big, if a big fish comes to Detroit, watch. I'm very curious to revisit this conversation in a year to see where they finish then. Because, again, my, my, my point on it is it's a very reactive 
uh, vote. Yeah, yeah. My take from this is I think it's a combination of two things. I think it's any free agency you look at really hasn't been. Yes, Steve Eisman has added a lot. Would you classify them as elite franchise different makers? No, no, none of them are right. And so I think that kind of plays a role into it. And then you look at the prospects that they have drafted. Well, yeah, they have drafted pretty well, biased or biases aside, they have. However, the other thing that they're looking at is we haven't had a rookie make the team, I guess, since Elmer Soderblom, if you want to look at it that way. I mean, Jonathan Bergeron really didn't get to start with the team right away, so you can't even classify that. We mm -hmm. haven't had a rookie start with the team since Elmer Soderblom. He got sent down pretty quickly. So really looking at it, we haven't had a rookie start with the team and play a full season since Moritz Sider and Lucas Raymond. And so I think that plays a factor into it too. So no Marco Casper, no Nate Danielson, no none of these guys. We haven't seen any of them yet. So I think that plays a particular role in this as well. So those are my two thoughts on it as to why the Red Wings are lower compared to what they were last year. But I'm right there with you, Carlo. And Matt, everything that you guys said, I, I'm right there with you guys. I do think going into the season, depending on the way it goes, it's that that 21st is going to go up or down. It could get better or it could get worse. It could get way better or it could get way worse. Right. And so um, going to the off season next year. Right. I think that's going to be a key indicator. And if you fast forward a year from now and that same article comes out a year from now, and if you got someone like a dry cycle, a Mitch Marner or any of those names, yeah, you're not going to be 21st anymore. Well, no, man. And, to be honest with you, to put them at 21 now is, is even – I think that's even a little weird because – and I think it's offside because I I think this – you got to look at what was inherited. Like people need to go back and remind themselves. Go look at the team when Steve Eisenman took over and then go look at the team now. Like it's vastly different. Like that alone keeps Steve Eisenman for me top 10 for sure. Biased, one hundred percent. But when you look at everything that's been going on, he's for me. He's he's in the top ten. I'm not going to tell you where he's in the top ten. It might be number ten, but whatever. Like he, he, you know, Zach, you 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 brought up an interesting point. The rook, the last rookies we've had start was Moritz Sider and Lucas Raymond for a full season. Technically, yes, they're studs. Mm -hmm. They are certified studs. Boom, top ten. I rest my case. Moving on. <laughs> yeah, we can move along to the next one. No, I think that let us know what you guys think down in the comments. And I guess I should take the time to say this now. Thanks for joining us once again. If you are returning, if you are new, thanks for joining us on this beautiful podcast that we have on this beautiful Sunday morning. It is currently 1145 a.m. If you have not already, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up. Let's get this over right 20 there. likes. This oh. seems to be going really well so far. You guys are killing it. We really do appreciate that. If you're on Spotify, if you're on Apple, go ahead and follow us on there, rate us, and then hit that like button as well. Whatever you got to do on there, I'm not exactly sure. You guys are the watchers, the viewers, and the listeners. <laughs> so um, with that being said, also, we are trying to get to – we are very close to this, by the way. I think it's less than 40 followers away from 1,000 followers on Twitter. We will be doing a giveaway announcement once we do reach 1,000 followers mm -hmm. on Twitter. And I did leave a little hint for those people, and I will say it on this episode, that it is an item you can only get that was limited at a Detroit Red Wings game last year. If you can take a guess, let us know what you think it is at the bottom. I will be very shocked if you actually get it right. I will be very impressed. But yeah, it's going to be a great item. I think you guys will enjoy it. So let's get to 1,000 followers on Twitter. If you're not on Twitter already, also known as X, we don't call it that because why would we? It sounds really dumb. Um, Elon, please change it. I know you do polls all the time. Yes, people want Twitter back, please. I can't X a repost. Like, it just sounds so weird, right? But if you're not on Twitter, go ahead and just make one just to follow us. You're going to get majority of the news on there. I promise you that versus Facebook and Instagram. But continuing oh, yeah. on, continuing on, word via norin.se. This is like the Swedish or uh, <clears throat> news article placer. I don't even know exactly. Yeah, yeah. Anyways. Great. Um, they're saying that MBN will be at the Red Wings, uh, camp in September. It was said that ASP would also be there, but it does not sound like that's the case anymore. I think that's awesome. Do I think that that's an indicator that there's a shot for him to make the team? I don't think so. I think they want him to get a taste of 
what it's like to play with NHL talent, get familiarized with that, and take what you learn there and shift it over to the SHL so you can dominate a little bit better. That's my thought on it. Do you guys have any thoughts on that real quick? Yeah, I think uh, pretty similar to what you said. I actually think that he does, if he's going to be in camp, I think that means that the Red Wings think he has a legit shot in making the team out of camp. You know, I think what they're really looking at is, you know, maybe this guy comes down to the final cuts and if he really fights for it and earns his way to play for the team, he can do that. And I think really what they'll just do is have him do like that nine game stint in the NHL, you know, just not burn off a year and then he'll go over to Sweden. I could definitely see that happening. I think that's a good reality. I think it's their plan to kind of give him a taste of just like, hey, look, like you are a first round pick. We're really high on you. You know, like you're a big part of our future. We want you to see now what NHL competition looks like because number one, that'll set him up pretty well for the future in the NHL. And number two, he can take those skills back to Sweden and apply them to the team he plays for now. And hopefully that'll ensure the, that he has a really successful uh, season in, in Sweden. And then, you know, next year we'll see what happens. Maybe he actually has a shot of playing a full season on the Red Wings. So I kind of think that's what's going to happen. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but I could definitely see a reality where that would happen. I, I'm right there with you, Matt. I think there's a reality. I don't think that that's the most likely reality, but I do see the reality there that that could actually happen and that there's an opportunity there for him. But the only argument I have against that is that Nate Danielson, we saw that last year with them. Yeah. They didn't do it with him, so I don't know why they would do it with them being. But, Carlo, what, what do you think about it? Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of do agree with, with what you guys are saying there, Matt, specifically yourself, and, like, why not do that? But I honestly think they're bringing him over to do the camp to gate, I think it's pretty clear that they think he could probably handle and you know handle his own type of way in the NHL, whether it be for nine games. But I honestly think they're looking at engaging the want meter. Does he mm -hmm. want to be here right now? Yeah. Right. So, because uh, that's huge, and you can tell when someone's checked in or if someone's not fully checked in. So I think there's a little bit of that too that they're going to measure based off of his play, based off of his off ice stuff. I do think there's going to be a bit of a, uh, does this guy want to be here this year? Uh, and if he does, maybe that's when you see that nine game um, stint granted that he holds his own and, and he plays and he competes and he compliments other players around him. And he, you know, lights, lights up some goals for himself. And he's that package that we want him to be. Uh, but I think a lot of it has to do with does MBN want to be here? Cause that's huge, especially mm -hmm. guys, you got to remember this, they're young kids, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, that's huge is does he want to be here like he's 19 he's 18 like he's still a kid you got to kind of see how his maturity levels and all that stuff so I think there's a little bit of that that we have to look at as well but and that's why I'm fine with him and ASP sticking around mm -hmm. over there you know keep growing up a little bit not to sound condescending at all literally though just right. spend another year let's get you in your 20s you have a little bit more experience and um or maybe they're just waiting till they're 21 so they can come over here and, and be illegal to drink. You know, who knows? <laughs> Could be that too. I know that's pretty We don't want you too. over here until you're ready to hit the bars with us, boys. So <laughs> let's wait until then. But uh, I would say, Carlo, I do technically agree with you, but I would say that it's also the reverse too, right? Do the Red Wings need MBN right now or do they want him right now? Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's a great call. Thing too, mm -hmm. right? So I'm right there with you though. Um, moving along, how many number one defensemen are there in the NHL? Well, theoretically, there should be 32, right? Top fantasy defensemen ranked by users of the NHL Rank King app. Cider was ranked 15th. Do you agree or disagree? This is just for fantasy. This is not real life situations. This is probably going to be a tough question to answer. You could just say yes or no to make it that simple. Yeah, that's that's definitely a tough question uh, when you put them up against all the rest of the defensemen in the NHL. I think given what his age is and his... Let's say for a lack of a better word, lack of experience. Obviously, he's, you know, he's earned his career in the NHL, but he's only been around for a few years. I think what he's shown in a short time is that 15, I don't know. I think it's maybe a little low for him. I wouldn't call him like top 10 yet, but I definitely think he has potential to get there one day in his prime. He could be a top 10 defenseman. I think 15 might be a little too low for him. I put him around like 13 or 12, honestly, because I think, again, just given his age and also, given the fact that, I mean, we know the state of the of the of the, of the defense in Detroit, it's it's not great. 
Like he's been asked to do a lot, like probably a lot more than he should be asked to do. And he's really done it with no issues. So yeah, I think definitely he is a little bit better than where he's slotted for sure. Yeah, I've had Mo Sider in a couple fantasy leagues before. And mm-hmm. I mean, we I mentioned it last episode. There's only one defenseman in the last decade to have recorded 200 hits and block shots in yeah. one season. And that was Mo Sider. And if you're in a specific league, like where you're a fantasy keeper league, where you keep these players for a long time. Yeah, you're exactly right, Matt. He's a young player that you definitely would want in your keeper league that you would draft first over or first round, right? To keep him forever because of how young he is and how good he is. Um, but I'm right there with you as well. I'd probably put him at 12 or 13 around there. I think 15 might be a little low. Um, and this is all for fantasy perspective, right? So it all depends on how you play your fantasy league and how the points are distributed. But totally. Carlo, yes or no, I guess. For me, I mean, listen, I, my fantasy for hockey is a little bit different than most. Uh, is we don't categories. Um, yeah, like so there's it's not head to head. It's you score essentially you score if you score it's 5 points if you get an assist it's 3 points oh, if you're so a goalie i do it yeah okay if you're a goalie you get a uh, point per save but if you let in a goal it's minus 4 mm-hmm. um, yeah. so like the, it's very high scoring yeah i would put Murray yeah, Sider like- for in that type of league i would put Sider probably 15 not fit between 15 and like 19. That's where I'd put cider. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Personally, okay. So he's on the opposite of what Matt and I are on. That's yeah. Fine. And, and, and yeah. I'll be honest with you for me, it's, it's because I look at who's above him and then I say, well, who's going to win me the championship. Is it going to be one of right. these guys or is it, it's going to still, it's going to be one of the guys who are scoring more. Think of your, mm-hmm. uh, your Roman Yossi's dude, that guy Kale puts McCarr. up insane points. Kale McCarr, mm-hmm. uh, even Josh Morrissey in Winnipeg, he's yep. like a sleeper. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's gonna be a sleeper oh, yeah. this year, but he's 100%. really sick. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I look at fantasy way too much and very <laughs> analytically, and <laughs> I, I, I would put Cider a little bit on the uh, yeah, I think 15 that those those spots make a little more sense for him in my type of league. Um, I but I have had him. You. I have had him. Like I have, I have traded Adam for him. Fox. I have made some moves to to get him because oh, him. Sorry. of the yeah. other things that he does well, which is the hitting and the blocking, which also does net me some points. I thought you were saying Adam Fox, and you were saying I had him. I was like, oh, okay, my oh, bad. I've never, I've never, had, I've never had, I've never had, I've never had Adam Fox. I've never had, I've never had Adam Fox. But I, I agree with you, Moritz Sider. If you're if you're on the board and you haven't selected a defenseman yet, and every defenseman's still up there, Sider probably wouldn't be your first pick, right? It would probably no. be Kale mm-hmm. McCarr, Josh Morrissey, Adam Fox, all those players, right? It would probably be one of those. And Moritz Sider would probably be your second or your third choice. So, okay, yeah, I see where you're coming from, Carlo, and it definitely depends on what league you're in. Totally. Um, yeah. Well, and I, then, I just wanted to say, like, like yeah. defensemen like that in fantasy, the guys that are like, like, obviously you'd love to have, like, I had Quinn Hughes last year. He scored whatever, like 90 points or something insane. Mm-hmm. But I would kind of put him, like, if there's a tier one where it's like Makar, Fox, Quinn Hughes, throw Roman Yossi in there, um, maybe Noah Dobson. That's my Islanders homer coming out, though. Maybe yeah. Noah Dobson. He did <laughs> score a lot. Evan Bouchard. And then I put Sider like in the tier two right below that. We're like, yep. he's going to be a half point per game defenseman. But what he lacks in, if he's not getting an assist every single night or scoring a goal every single night, Blocking. it's not uncommon for this dude to go out there and have like five block shots, yep. three hits, just absolutely truck a dude. Like that's like in leagues that we're talking about, like those are where you can get points too. Or like those are super valuable defensemen that even though they're not on the score sheet every single night, you're still probably going to get like, eight, 10 fantasy points out of him just for yeah. him going out there and just being a human house. So correct. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you're yeah. exactly right. He, he makes up for his lack of points and in, in, in everything else in the de- defensive way. Right. And so the block mm-hmm. shots, all that yeah. other stuff, you're exactly right, Matt. Um, Last thing for Red Wings news, NBN and Casper will play for their nations for the Olympic qualifying rounds. Super cool. I think that's awesome. So that will be Classic for, good for them. That will be for Austria and oh, I why am I drawing a blank on what MBN is? Please, someone help Norway. me. Out. Norway, Norway. Yeah. Thank you so much. I was gonna say Switzerland for whatever reason. <laughs> a little bit um, north. I guess real quick, boys, mailbag or around the league news first. Which one? Let's go mailbag. Uh, yeah, let's change it. Let's reach in our right. bag. All right, let's get hopping into the bag. And thank you once again to everyone that submitted their questions. Uh, we posted on Twitter. 
posted on YouTube. We posted on Facebook and Instagram. So once again, thanks to everyone who posed their questions. And so I will be reading the names of the people who posed their questions too. So that way you guys get credit and we want to show appreciation to you guys for taking the time to do that. So splendid. Um, yeah. Um, and this is from get that dough on YouTube. What is your take on that? The Red Wings are the softest team in the NHL. <laughs> they say that they're that we have no players that throw weight or th or uh throw gloves on this team so what's your take on his question being is the red wings the softest team my my take is just refer back to the cider talk we had five minutes ago and there you go can't be that <laughs> soft if we have a dude who's just like trucking people all over the ice i kind of see what get that dough is i love that name by the way yeah <laughs> that's good name. That's a great name. Um, no, no, whoever, whoever came up with that, you're a G. But um, I kind of understand what you're saying. Um, because you look at, I mean, look at the Sens, right? They're every game they're getting in scuffles, and right. I mean, the Red Wings, mm -hmm. when it comes to being in their own front net, it doesn't really seem like that they were doing that a lot this past season. So I understand what they're saying. Would I say they're the softest team? No, I would say that we're probably bottom 10. To be completely honest, we can't be the softest team if the Leafs literally exist. <laughs> so, hey, okay. Carlo, your thought on that? I, I just don't think it's the it's the game we're trying to play right now. Um, Correct. I, like we're fast, like we're a quick team. Uh, I think that if somebody does something questionable to one of the players on our team, somebody steps up. Uh, I definitely have seen someone step up. Uh, I mean, look, Perron got suspended. Now he's playing mm -hmm. with the guy that he absolutely clobbered yeah. like yeah um i just don't think it's part of our game right now and i think the other part of that is i guess the other part of my answer is that you know when we're in this murky middle that we're in everything gets exposed everything that we want there to be gets exposed because it's just not there yet when we're playing and competing with the top 10 when we're in the top 10 of the league top eight Ask that question again. You're not even going to ask that question again. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a completely different team. Like, it's going to be a different group of guys. You're going to have guys that are on the team now that are older or maybe a little more calloused. Plus, you're going to have some other people coming in that are going to get signed to be role players to, to support these great players. And then you're going to start to see things hardening up. But at this point in time today, that's just not our game. And <clears throat> that's fine. As long as, hey... If someone gets if, if Larkin gets sucker punched and nobody stands up for him, I got a problem with that. Yeah. But I haven't seen that. Like if Larkin goes down, Raymond goes down, someone is stepping up and making their presence heard. Uh, and that's really all we can want right now. I get the question. Like I, I there are games where you're like, my God, this is so brutal. Like we're just getting yeah. toyed with. Absolutely. But we're not, I just don't think that's our game right now because we are a fast team. And I think we're looking to play more with that speed um rather than with that edge at this point in time but hopefully as these players mature they get a little more edgier they get a little bit more bite i think that's natural um you know just playing with a little more agitation like that's always good but i saw in this season dude exactly and i think i think david perron honestly was a perfect example of I'll that right back go Continue ahead on, sorry i think david perron was the perfect example of that guy who played with bite but look how much he costed us in penalties right so I, I right. it's just that balance is not what's needed right now. I think maybe that is this year. I can't speak on this year, but uh, I just don't think that's our game right now. Maybe it will be coming up. Maybe it will be in two years and you'll see us get some enforcers in there. I mean, we don't have a Darren McCarty because we don't really have a Steve Eiserman and a Sergey Fedorov on the team. Like we don't, we don't have that. Uh, but mm. if we go and net a big fish, I can see Stevie saying, okay, I need someone who's, who's going to, you know, enforce and, and, and be these guys' backup. Uh, that's going to be a requirement, I think, at that point. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it's a good question still. Um, everybody wants to see their their favorite team play with a little more bite. But right now, I just don't think it's the game these guys are being asked to play. Unfortunately, if it's unfortunate. Yeah, teams like the Florida Panthers are able to get away with it, right? Too, and then you look at teams like the Suns, like how I brought up before, too. I mean, those are two teams that get penalized very heavily, and even when they do get penalized, they play a certain game where they're able to bounce off of that and not get affected yep. by it. So yep. they do a really good job at that. And just like you said, Carlo, it's just not our game right now. Does that? I mean, there's definitely been some frustrating times where it's like, 
why the hell aren't they doing anything about this? And it's like the Red Wings are going to set themselves up to where it's going to hurt them in the long run during that game if they actually do do something about it, right? So you got to pick and choose your battles at that point. So Now, follow-up question is if, you know, if, if, if this mailbag from Carlo. Whoa. Yeah, so, so if this person's like, okay, is the wings, how, what was the question? How soft are the wings or wh where would you rank them between being the softest team? I think that's what it was. Um, your take on that the Red Wings are the softest team in yeah. the NHL. So what's his take on the Red Wings in ranking terms, one to 10? How disciplined are the Red Wings? Let us know in the comments. Get that dough. Drop it down. I'm curious. Drop it down. Let's move on to the next question. What positions would you play for the Red Wings and why? This is from DGen Red Wing fan on YouTube. <laughs> um, I'll start yeah. with that. I would, I, I'm going to be honest. I've said this a couple times. I suck at ice skating. I know that sounds really weird. Growing up in Michigan, loving hockey. I really cannot ice skate. So I'm going to choose goalie or bench warmer. Water boy. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be passing around Gatorades behind the bench, open up the gate for the players to go out. Maybe you have me play like two minutes a night, but I'm not going to be out there doing anything. I'll probably have a, a, a biz nasty career. Where I play like every like every like five games. I play for like three minutes and, you know, I go out there and I get punched in the face or I punch someone in the face. And uh, yeah, the whole time I'll just be passing around Gatorade. I'll, I'll bump the tunes in the locker room. Whatever you want me to do, stick me up in the press box. Give me some free hot dogs. I'm not, I'm not doing anything on the Red Wings, I'll tell you that much. If you had to pick a position, though, which one would it be, Matt? I'd probably go with you two, goalie. I mean, I don't think there's many 5'8 goalies that are going to make it in the NHL, but <laughs> you know, I don't think I don't really know if that's going to work out too well for me. But uh, I guess it's probably the only thing I could really do because I can't yeah, skate. Can't yeah, it can't be that hard to move side to side, right? Carlo, you currently play hockey. I don't know what position you play, but go ahead. D, I play D and I would play D. I would, I mean, they don't need forwards we, we, right now. We do not need that. There's already enough plug players and I am a plug. So I'm definitely not going to go and uh, take away a forward position there. But I would absolutely play D on the third line with Albert Johansson and shut shit down if if we're not yeah, riding there, the there pine. You go. We very well could be riding the pine for 50 go. to 60% of the game. But God help us if we get out there. Me and Aljo, oof, third line. Oof, seven minutes a game? Oof, I'm down. Oh, Carlos, boy, I'm down. Carlos going to have two points on the air, but it'll be plus 30. Oh, you better believe it, baby. Oh, ooh. Yeah, and if Derek were here, I know he would select forward. I'm pretty sure that's what he played when he played hockey when he was younger. Follow-up um, question would be who's sitting if Derek's in the lineup? Who's sitting? Derek. Me, I'll, I'll, I'll volunteer. <laughs> if, if he's playing and I'm Andrew Cop's sitting, I'm right. joking. I'm not going there. I'm not going there. Andrew Cop just got married. <laughs> Big props to Cop. Congrats oh, he did? Team. I didn't know that. Yeah, know congratulations, that. Andrew Copper. Yeah. Yeah. There you go, buddy. Nice. Um, next question. Do you think Steve Eisenman believes in the defense corp he has, or are the players just not tradable and he is stuck with the team? This is from Austin Rodriguez on Twitter. So I'm gonna I'm gonna re-say it again. Do you think Steve Eisenman believes in the defense? Or are the players just not tradable and he is stuck with them? So is he happy or is he stuck with them? I mean, I, I hope I hope so. I hope he's happy with them because he signed most of them and drafted all of them. So I would hope that he's happy with the D that he's built. It's not like I don't think there's anyone on the D core anymore who he inherited from Ken Holland. I think they're all gone at this point. So yeah, everyone yeah. on that D core, he either brought in free agency, traded for or drafted. So I would hope that he's confident in them or else. We're going to have some question marks raising here. Yeah, I don't know if the right – yeah. I, hmm. It's a really good question. It's um, a really good question. I Does he believe in this defense? I think he believes they can do good or else he would have traded more of them. Um, I don't think they're tradable. But I would agree, yeah. Some of them are not. Yeah. Some of them are not. Yeah, some of them aren't tradable. I think, you know, I think maybe the one you could realistically speak on is probably Justin Hall. That's probably the most regrettable one. If Steve Eisman had to pick one, it's probably that one. I is it the worst one? No, I do. wouldn't say that's the worst one. I, think I would ben say Ben, ben Sherrod. I mean, listen, like that's a lot. That's a big contract. It's the contract. Did he play better last year compared to his first year? Absolutely. Yeah, but the contract yeah. is still not good. It's big. And I don't know if, if, if this guy's question is is uh referencing the contracts like, i have a feeling it is when he says is it is he just stuck 
you're only stuck right. if nobody wants any of these people, right? So I'm a kind of putting two and two together to think that a lot of that has to do with contract stuff. Like when I look at the decor, there's two terrible contracts. It's Ben Sherratt and Justin Hall. Yeah. That's not terrible. I mean, that's not terrible. I mean, go look at around the league. Like how many other brutal contracts are there on D? Look at Seth Jones making nine and a half Dude, million dollars yeah, exactly. for another were, freaking five years. There were that like five brutal the contracts years. signed for in free agency this year. Yep. Like a month ago, there were like five brutal contract signs. So yeah, like that's just kind of how it is, right? Like we we've seen what the market is. Like if if you don't believe that it's like a, a premium market for defensemen, just look back to what happened in free agency this year. Look at these monster contracts handed yeah. out. All of a sudden, Sherrod doesn't look that bad when you look at you know that's the Mantori contract, the uh, Montour contract, the the Shea contract. Those are all good players, but god damn, that's a lot of money to shell up for those guys. So. That's kind of just what the market is, honestly. And, you know, we'll put a quarter and the cap is going up, Jar, because I'm going to say it right now. The cap is going up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, by the time con the Chirac contract is done, we're going to look back on it and be like, okay, well, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that That's, horrible. And yeah. I, I remember a few years ago, Florida traded a first-round pick for Chirac. So GMs around the league really value guys like that. No matter how we as fans feel about guys like Chirac, GMs around the league really like players like that. I, don't ask me why, but they do. Yeah, I mean, you make a really good point, man, because I was going to bring that up when you finished, is that, you know, come next year when Sherratt and Hall, I believe both of them would be on their last year of the deals. I mean, Sherratt, what he makes in Hall, and if the cap goes up another $4 million and it's like over 90 mil, there could be teams out there they are like, yeah, we do need a seventh defenseman, but will you just eat half that cap of Justin Hall? Done. Yeah, yeah. Sure, take him. Done. So I don't take think it's hands. that they're untradeable right now. I think that, well, actually, it's part of it. Yeah, so I would actually agree. I think I, I agree with you. I agree with Austin Rodriguez on both sides. I think that he does believe in this defense, but I also believe that Steve is kind of stuck with some of these guys. I thought only Mata could have been traded, but did he want to trade him? Probably yeah. not because he plays really good defense. So. You got to also think, keep in mind too, especially, you know, Austin, who's asking the question, like, are we stuck or are we just in a league with 32 other teams all trying to get better? Right. And That's every, the, and you, yeah. And you look at every team, they all have a bad contract or two on them. Not every, like you, if you can find me one team that does not have a bad contract, I'll be shocked. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I was. That's what I was saying earlier. Like, I I don't think we're stuck because we want to be stuck, and I don't think we're stuck because Steve doesn't believe in the group. I think Steve believes in the group. Mm -hmm. um, I think if Steve could make it better, Steve would make it better. But he's competing against 31 other t GMs who are kind of wanting to do the same thing. Who also simultaneously, when you got these 31 guys trying to make their team better. That's your market. Now your market goes up. And then Matt talked about the Matt Roy contract. Then it comes down to what's it worth to Austin to be unstuck? Mm -hmm. Is it worth retaining 50, 60% of a contract and then overpaying somebody by 50%? Like, is that what's, there's so much other questions that come with a question like that. It's, that's why I said it was a great question because yeah. it, it, to be good, it costs money. And it's like, are you prepared to go and do that? type of roster surgery. I mean, I think Steve Eisman nailed it when he talked about unofficially saying like we were after Steven Stamkos, but when we looked at it, the amount of surgery we would have had to have done to the roster construction just made it not worth it. Mm -hmm. And you have to look at that and you got to give that some respect because it's, it's the truth. So I think we just come, it, I think it comes down to a little more patience. We talked about this with that athletic voting thing. I think we have what we have. Uh, we hope they can develop and get better to prove that we're not stuck and to prove that we're good. Um, and then I think, I just don't think the time is, is, is right to go and make those moves that make us feel unstuck. I, I think that's next year and, and, and beyond. You know what? And I'm going to apologize real quick. And I'm just now looking back at this. Um, I don't believe that that was actually Austin's question. His question will be up next. So I'm trying to figure out whose question this was. Um, but yeah, whoever asked this question, I will give you the shout out here in just a second. So I do apologize. Um, this would be from Cameron Nagel. 
on Twitter. So I do apologize. I goofed up there. Somehow. Thanks, Cameron. No, that was a good question. And it yeah. makes you go down an absolute wormhole of different, you know, thought processes to figure that one out. But I think, uh, no, definitely a sweet question for sure. That was good. Yeah. Good sorry, question. Austin. If you're watching this, you were probably so confused. Like I did not ask yeah. that question. What is yeah. this guy doing? So good. No, Cameron, that was a very good question. Thank you for asking that. I really do appreciate it. So Austin, your question is now, um, what do you foresee production wise out of Kane with a full season of conditioning as well as a full regular season? Uh, I think he's going to be damn near a point per game player. I I'd probably maybe like 75 points. If he plays a full season, I think that that's 70 to 75 points. That's for me. What do you guys think? Yeah, I'm I'm going to say on the low end, 65 points, but I could see him get 75 to 80, definitely. I think his floor is 65. Um, off the top of my head, I don't know. How how many points did he score this year, only playing like half a season? He was still like almost a point per game, right? 40. Yeah, off the dome, it was 40-something. 40 yeah, 40 I want to say it was 49, but I'll check. Yeah, you might be right. So, I mean, why why would he not do the same thing next year, you know? Nothing's really changing. He's going to be playing with Comfort still. He's going to have Tarasenko on his wing. Maybe he'll play with Raymond a little bit. We'll we'll see. He'll probably play with Debrinket too. And he'll points. be on the power play. So, you know, naturally on the power play, you're going to score points. So, yeah, I'd say official prediction, I'm going to say 72 points. That's my official prediction. Yeah, and you you beat us to it here, Austin. This was going to be in, a, in our... Uh bold predictions episode so you get a quick bold prediction here before everyone else does but uh yeah matt i'll agree with you um carlo you you made it uh oh. apparent to us well matt went sideways i just that went sideways quick, you're good <laughs> but carlo in the meantime while matt fixes that carlo you sent me and i think maybe you sent it to the group chat i can't remember that uh kane and comfort are practicing together currently right yeah. now that's a huge that's a huge plus considering how we looked at them last year and we're like there's something weird going on where they're not connecting. We understand that like Kane's coming into a new system. Comfort also coming into a new system. They've never played together before. So um, this only makes it better in adding a Tarasenko like Matt said. Yeah, I think sky's the limit for Kane here. And the only downside to Kane, I will say, Matt, the difference is that he's a year older. And obviously mm -hmm. we know as you progress in your late 30s, it doesn't get much easier or better. But I do think Kane still has the ability. This is his first full healthy off season in what three years. It seems like so sky's the limit yep. for the guy. I still think so. Carlo, your thoughts for Kaner for Kaner for Kaner playing a full season. Um, I'm going to put him at 85 points. Wow. All right. Um, I think he's going to, I, I, I mean, I'm really, really drinking the Kool-Aid of him practicing and having a full hockey players off season and whatnot. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go 85 points on a full season. If he doesn't, I think his floor, let's call it a floor, uh, would be 69 points. One, two, three. <laughs> hey, nice. Nice. Um, yeah, I would go 69. His ceiling is 85. All right. All right. Very cool. Yeah. And I will just just to kind of add on to that, too, is that, you know, you look at how the top six was constructed last year. You would insert David Perron. You would move, you know, Alex to bring down to play with Comfer and Kane or whatever you were doing, inserting that player, adding Vladimir Tarasenko. I know that a lot of fans were ripping on Comfer that he really didn't have the greatest season and almost kind of was like, Oh God, this is Andrew Kopp's first year 2.0 almost. But I do think that adding a Vladimir Tarasenko is only going to boast up JT Confer and going into his second season is going to boast him up, thus boasting up both his wingers and Tarasenko and Patrick Kane. So I'm going to leave that on the table to wrap that up. So great. real quick, we're sure. not, you know, Confer's not that far removed from being assigned the number one center role in Colorado where he was playing with um I think he was playing with Rantanen and Nachushkin or Rantanen and Burakovsky I don't know but there was an injury and Comfort got the call and he, I had him in my fantasy league and I do remember this um waiver wire pickup but he he actually was a big reason why I won the league that year he was on Colorado and he was playing top line I think McKinnon went down who I had as well not a big deal he McKinnon went on IR and I picked up Comfort and he 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 played really well on that top line. I am not saying Comfort is a top line guy, so please don't kill me. Uh, but we're not that far removed from that. And the point I'm trying to make is that 
you know, Comfer has played with some very skilled wingers. I think him taking this offseason, spending that with Patrick Kane, his new winger, uh, and really getting to know each other, really building that chemistry and, and practicing and playing offseason hockey and, and skating with him is going to be big. Uh, I'm expecting big results from that second line as a result of what I've seen those two do this offseason. I think the Red Wings actually posted a little little fun video about that on their socials. But, um, yeah, we're not far removed from Comp for having that type of role. Um, and the good news is that he doesn't have that type of role here, but he does have a sick winger in Patrick Kane. So I think it's just a lot of good news ahead with that. That's part of the reason why I got Patty Kane ceiling at 85 points because I think Comfort is going to have a really good year this year. I, I just feel that way about JT. I think he's a gamer uh, and I think he's going to take another step for us. I really do. Yeah, there's a reason why they signed him to that deal. I really do believe, you know, that he could be a good serviceable 2C, if not just a really good overall 3C. I do think he's better than Andrew Kopp, so I do think that he's going to yeah. have an improved season this season with Kane and Tarasenko. Full season of both, hopefully. Um, God forbid anything happens to both of those guys. But Correct. onward to the next question, and this is from Randy Zick on Twitter, who also won a hat in our giveaway. Congratulations. I know those are going nice. to be shipped out, so... They take a while to embroider these lovely hats. So congratulations to those winners. I probably should have done that at the beginning of the episode. But uh, yeah, congratulations to those that won. Those will be hopefully shipping out soon. I'll get in contact with the company here tomorrow morning about, hey, let's get them going. Uh, Randy Zick's question was, what's your prediction for these young rookies playing with the big boys? Follow up question, who's going to be in Detroit and who's going to be in Grand Rapids? So the first question, what's your prediction for these young rookies playing with the big boys? Um, I guess in terms, he's probably talking about Edvinson, Berggren, and Albert Johansson, maybe, maybe throwing in Casper Danielson and some other names. Um, follow up question who's going to be in Detroit and who's going to be in GR? I think the raw to me personally, I'm speaking on myself, I think the roster is pretty set. Um, once I sign Berggren, I think it's pretty set in stone. I don't yeah. think we see Casper, I don't think we see mm -hmm. Nate Danielson, I don't think we see Carter Mazer bearing any injuries. Correct. I don't see it. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, that's just the way it is. Um, I think maybe the first couple games we probably don't even see Albert Johansson play. I think he probably gets in the press box for the first couple of games until something happens where a player just goofs up or an injury happens. Um, yeah, I guess that kind of really. But but my predictions, um, in terms of Simon Edmondson, I think he he starts out top four on defense, and then as the season dwindles down, he's going to be paired up with uh, with Cider. Uh, Berggren, I really don't know. Uh, to be completely honest, that's a crapshoot for me. Mm -hmm. Um He's a fourth liner starting out right now, based on what it looks like. It's going to come down to injury, and if he can take the 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 rain, right? Can can what can he do to to showcase Coach Lalone? Like, hey, bump me up. I've been doing everything that you've been asking me to do, and then some. So, those are my thoughts, uh, Albert Johansson. Yeah, my expectation for him is to at least play more than half the season. That's my expectation. Show that you can do that. Show you belong here. Thoughts, boys. I'm with you there all day. I got nothing more to add. I think you're bang on. No, I, I definitely agree. And one thing that I will add, and I don't want to borrow too much from my bold predictions because I do want to save most of this for that episode that we do, but I, I think we see Danielson force his way on the team. I don't know who's going to bump off the team, but I think he's he's just too good that I think he's going to get on. I think he's going to have a monster camp. He's going to show the team, like, hey, I'm not, I'm not screwing around. Like, I want to be on this team. I deserve to be on this team. I'm going to prove to you that I... I can and should play in the NHL. I think Steve Eiserman and Coach alone are going to agree with him. That's the only thing yeah. I would change. Matt, I'll agree with you, and I'll jump on that too. Randy, to, to kind of give you a perspective, I think if there was a rookie that I could see make the jump outside of Edvinson, Johansson, and Berggren, it would probably be Nate Daniels. Nate Daniels, yeah. People would probably sure. say Mazer. Some people would probably say Casper, but I legitimately believe that would be Nate Danielson because of how hard he pushed the last season. So Mazer um, needs to gain weight, man. Unless he has. He might have. <laughs> He's going to get destroyed, man. He's so Starting light. Some donuts. I'm just yeah. laughing because this is like the fourth time you said it. Dude. <laughs> like, it is, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's like true. It's very true. <laughs> it's, it, yeah, it's very true. Mazer, I'm sure you're putting on weight. You're coming on all these podcasts. Maybe you can come on ours one of these days. Yeah. We'll, we'll hit you up. But, Ma but Mazer um, needs to get dummy thick. Dummy thick. <laughs> Become a bowl of oatmeal, as I like to say. Um, there you go. From, from Maddie Ice on Twitter. 
Um, when are those Raymond and Cider deals coming and what are they going to look like? I don't know. When are they coming? I don't know. Carlos said you yeah, got what? Now it's like 28 days until training camp. They can't train with them if they're not signed. So correct. And 28 days are going to be signed, Matty Ice. There we go. There we go. That's a great answer, Zach. Hey, and that's I a think, good answer. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's a horrible answer, but that's probably the best answer I can. No, that's a really. I wasn't being an ass. That was literally the perfect way to handle that one because it's the truth. It's the honest to god truth. Yeah. yeah, I don't think it goes beyond that. I will be very surprised. Would I be alarmed? No, because then it's going to happen eventually. It would just be before the regular season. I would be very shocked if either of those two go beyond the regular season. I would be very surprised if it's a William Nylander situation, right? But in terms of what they're going to look like, we said it on previous episodes, based on what we've seen all these younger players get, it's only helping Lucas Raymond and Mo Red Sider out. So based on what I'm seeing so far, both of them can get the bag eight and a half plus mil still. I, I, I truly believe that. Um, and then you're left with Bear Grin too, like excluding Bear Grin, The Red Wings don't really have that much cap space right now. Um, so Steve Reisman definitely has to be super strategic um, in terms of deals. Based on the way the cap is structured right now, boys, it seems to be more and more likely that one, only one of the two are going to get a long-term deal between Lucas Raymond and Moritz Sider and the other one's going to get like a one- or two-year deal. That's my thought on it. What do you guys think? Hmm. I I have no more opinions on this signing. I just wanted to get done. I think if, <laughs> if you came to us and you expected us to give you an answer on this, you are in the complete wrong place. You are barking up the wrong tree. I wish I could tell you when these deals are getting done. Um, I, I agree with you. I think it's going to be training camp. I can't imagine it goes past training camp. I really can't. I'd be shocked if it goes past then. So I'm going to agree there. Um, as far as bridge long-term dude, at this point, who knows? I'm hoping both for long-term, but we'll, we'll yeah. see. Yeah. I should have mentioned that we want a long-term, I, I believe all of us. So, but Carlo real quick. Um, I think. I think Cider's going to do like a four-year deal and it's okay. going to probably be high. Like I think it's probably going to be like eight, eight point five in four years. And then I think uh, Raymond will do a full seven, seven or eight year deal. And it'll probably be at like 7.9, 7.8 around there. I, I think you're right. Just given what we've seen for the market for defensemen. Yeah, I think Cider, if he waits three or four years, he could he could really get the bag. So well, he's gonna get I the actually, bag. I do like that, but it's gonna be it's gonna be a four year bag, which is still a crazy well, that's bag. What I mean, yeah, yeah, the and then he's gonna bag. get the bag again, dude. Like he's yeah. gonna get paid. So these agents are playing it very smart with these young players. There's a reason why majority of them now aren't signing the eight year long term deals, right? They're going for the four or five, right? Because they know that. You can get it one more time and potentially one more time after that. Yeah. So the agents are getting paid too, man. They know what they're yep. doing. Exactly. Commission. How you doing? All right, boys. We're down to our final question. And that would be from Nick from the Hockey Town West podcast. And he posted this on Twitter. If one morning you woke up and you had lobster hands, what would you do? And I already answered this question supposedly to Nick. I don't remember what my response was, but um, I guess I would. Just go around pinching people all day because I think that would be a lot of fun, honestly. If I woke up and I had lobster hands, I'd uh, I'd tell SpongeBob to get back on the grill and make me some more money. <laughs> That's what I do. That's a good one, Matt. That's a good one, Carlo. What would you do? PG. The first thing I would do is learn how to use a pen with lobster hands, and then. And then record myself steining Lucas Raymond and Moritz Snyder <laughs> with said pen with lobster hands to show that if a lobster can do it, Stevie can do it too. That's my like answer. That. That's what I'm rolling with. That's but awesome. if you want a realistic answer, if I really woke up with lobster hands, I'd probably go right into the kitchen, crack open a bag of pistachios and say, oh, baby, it's go time. Because realistically, <laughs> those are such a pain in the ass. Would you use your lobster hands to crack open crab in spite that you have lobster hands? That's a very evil genius thing to think about. Yeah, it just randomly came up in my head. Yeah, I know. I guess I would. I mean, I do like crab. I I, I suppose the butter part would be a little difficult. So hopefully you like crab without butter, but 
Um, I think, you know what? I think the more fun thing would be entering a seafood restaurant and declaring <laughs> myself the new king. I'm the yeah, guy. There you now. go. That's what I do. I'd walk and then the they lobster. look at you and then they hold you down and they chop off your lobster arms. And, and then I'm done. And then there. it's all over. Short lived <laughs> king. walking into Red Lobster and clocking in. Yeah, they're not they're not filing for chapter eleven anymore, folks. Not after yeah, exactly. this one. <laughs> Nick, thank you for the great question. That good question, question, Nick. Great as great always, questions. what a beauty! Such a beauty. I do believe that was all of the questions that we had. Um, there might have been a couple more, but I didn't really want to put them on there because a lot of people did ask us questions, whether if it was recorded or not. Some people did ask me stuff um, without putting them on social media. But once again, thank you to everyone for asking us those questions. That was actually a lot of fun. It was. Thank you. Yeah. Claps, thank claps for everybody. That was great. Let's keep that going. And boys, let's go ahead and just wrap up with some around the league news. Matt, I know you do have a hard stop coming up here, so we'll just go through these. You guys don't really have to speak on them. Um, around the league news, Patrick Laine and his fiance announced a new mental health initiative called From Us to You on Instagram. Nice. Um, Good that's, for the yeah, that's really awesome. You do know that we're in the off season when we're mm -hmm. talking about stuff like this. No offense to them, like I said, but I do think that that's a great initiative that they are actually taking. No, but um, good for but, him. You know, he's yeah, he's good for a really tough time for the past yeah. few years. So it's, I think it's, it's going to be good, he's... good for his mental too, yeah. for himself. Right, like he, something he needs to do to feel better. I, I love that. I love. It's that. good to see he's finally rounding the corner there. So you know, I'm happy for him. And anytime he wants to play for the Red Wings, hit up Stevie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would love his shot. Door yeah, still I'm... open for you. Uh, Lane also thanked everyone for the support he has received over the past few months. So yeah, Lane, we, I, I would say that majority of the people are definitely for you. So keep doing what you're doing and just keep enjoying yourself, man. Don't be so hard on yourself and do what you got to do. Everyone understands or should. Um, awesome. Matthews named captain for the Toronto uh, Maple Leafs on Tuesday, the first American born <laughs> captain for the Toronto Maple Leafs. I, I have a quick question for you guys, because to me, we've seen this before, right? We saw it kind of like with Dustin Brown going to Anze Kopitar. Um, and I'm kind of I'm, I'm kind of curious to know, do you do you think John Tavares initiated this or do you think the front office initiated this? I kind of think that John Tavares kind of looked at it as like, hey, like I. Maybe maybe he's kind of like getting too much like from the media. Who knows? And he's like, hey, I think maybe it's a good idea to kind of pass it along to Austin Matthews because I only have one year left here. But well, it, that's yeah, why I kind of weirded out because it's like this dude only has one more year left. Why not just let it ride out? I think no one has fumbled their career quite like John Tavares has. I mean, he he literally shows Speaking the worst. from an Isles fan and, too. Sorry, I mean, man. even if I were like completely unbiased, like, like you got to look at it from an objective point of view. Like, the Islanders almost made it to the cup a few years ago, and he has barely made it out of the first round. And I've always said, I've always said this that if he stayed with the Islanders and he was on that cup run with them, they would have won the cup. He was the missing piece. I mean, you can argue with me about it. There's no guarantees. Obviously, it's a hypothetical, but. I think they would have at least come close to winning okay. or would have won the cup. So I I think it was mostly the front office that initiated it. And of yeah. course, Tavares being the guy that he is, he yes. was like, you know what? Yeah, I'll step aside. Clearly, Austin Matthews, he's he's gonna be one of the best leaf players of all time, if he's not already. Oh, I mean yeah. I mean, seriously, one of the greatest American born players, that guy's gotta be the captain. Like he is their entire franchise right now. So I totally understand it, um, but yeah, I'm going to put the Islanders fan cap back on. Suck a pajama boy. <laughs> Carlo, do you kind of, uh, Matt didn't really get into answering, I guess, the, the way that I looked at it. So I guess I want to propose it to you. No, do I mean, you I, I did. Like... I, I think it was the front office. No, he said, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, my bad. You just stepped oh. away, but that's yeah, I'm sorry. with them. My I'm dog's making them. a lot of noises. That's why I've been stepping away. Sorry, yeah. just making sure they're not getting into trouble. But Carlo, what do you think? Do you think it's more I'm dirty thing? JT kind of represented it. No, I think it was front office, hundred uh, percent. I think J now, I think JT is one hundred percent a class act human being. Yeah, um, and I think he did support it, but uh, there's no way I think JT woke up one day, called uh, Tree Living, and like, hey. Uh, yeah, it's time to it's time for the C to get off my chest. No chance. No, <laughs> no one's doing that. Mm -hmm. um, that was 100% initiated by the front office. 
They must have sold it really well. Maybe they didn't. Maybe they did. But either way, John Tavares handled it like a like a first class individual, which I do think yeah. he is. Uh, tons of respect for him in doing that. That's and you know what's crazy is that you know the people think like the C on the chest is the definition of a leader. What John Tavares just did, that's the definition of a leader. Yeah, one hundred percent. And I'm, I'm not, sure he's going to keep an A, right? So. I would I'm not imagine comfortable so. with all this Tavares praise, but I guess I have to agree with you, <laughs> dude. It's the reality of it. I mean, you're right. It's the truth. It's the yeah. truth. Like, does it make sense for? Does it make way too much sense for for Austin Matthews to have the seat? Yes, it, it, that's that has to happen. Mm -hmm. But then it's like you fast forward and you start thinking of like, okay, what's going to happen to this team's breakout now? So John Tavares has his, this is his last year at 11 million. Does John Tavares get re-signed to Toronto for five million? Or do they let him walk and they spend that five million on someone younger, and he's I just do. not part of the team anymore? Like that, I could see that being the case because he's he's kind of slow now. Like he's up there. I mean, I can still view John Tavares as a very good serviceable two C. I mean, even at five mil, you ain't gonna find another John Tavares for five mil. I think that would be a steal, in my personal opinion, Carlo. What would you pay him? You just said five mil. No, what would you? I'm asking what you would pay him. Oh, would like to come to the Red Wings? No, no, no. Just you're you're a GM oh. and you have an opportunity to sign John Tavares. He's going to be executing a role of 2C. What's Zach paying John Tavares for whatever team you run? Could be the Detroit Red Wings. I don't care. Yeah, I don't really have any of his stats pulled up in front of me, but I guess off the dome, off the rip real quick. Yeah, it's 65 if points on him, in 80 yeah. games last year. Okay. If you're selling on him, yeah, no, you're good. If you're selling on him that like, hey, we really need you and we think that you can elevate us to win a cup, um, three years, maybe like six to seven million dollars. I think that's fine for a legitimate two C. I mean, I would say that he's better than Andrew or Andrew Cop, obviously, but JT Comfer. Yeah. I, I I was gonna say seven mil too. You so you're gonna pay John Tavares seven million when he's 36 years old. When he's do it for a year then sure yeah i can see a one year seven deal for sure yeah. i can see that but malt like term two three years i'm not going personally i wouldn't go higher than five, five i guess five. i forgot how old he was so yeah take it back a little bit so yeah if you wanted to go a little bit longer you definitely have to bring down the cost but uh i mean you talk about leadership you know that's someone that you would love to have in the locker room in case dylan larkin or someone else gets injured you know he could be a good follow-up person for that so yeah looking at it from that perspective um, let's go ahead and move on. Um, <laughs> Blues and Pens swap second and third round picks to open up offer sheet opportunities, thus leading the Blues to offer sheet Philip Broberg at two years, $4.58 million, and Dylan Holloway at two years, $2.29 million. The Oilers have minus $354,000 in cap space currently as of Tuesday morning. Compensation do is a third pick for Holloway and a second pick for Brogberg. Get this. This is the twist. Had they gone one more dollar over on AEV on each player, that would have bumped up the compensation for both those players. That is absolute fantastic GMing work mm -hmm. by St. Blues. Blues. Is it still Doug Armstrong? I don't know who their GM is anymore. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, yeah, I mean, there was no way that the Oilers were going to keep these players, right? And I'm sure they're looking at it from the perspective of, we don't want to lose Leon Dreisaitl next year. We got to save up on cap. I'd rather have Leon Dreisaitl than both of these players combined. But it's going to look really silly when they lose Leon Dreisaitl too, if they do. Mm -hmm. Totally. So Overall, I thought that was pretty exciting. That's the most excitement we've gotten in, in hockey, I feel like, in a long while, right? Since free agency period, probably. Wait, did they? So did they match? Like, I don't know where we're at with that now. I know that it happened, no, and then it just kind of went. Uh, I'll, they... I'll pull it up real quick, but I believe I don't think they, did. they did sign. I think they did, but I'm about to check. Let's pull it up while I fill in the air. I'm trying to. Where are they? Um, no, currently they are not signed still. So, um, but the players have to come to an agreement to essentially be traded and accept those deals. So it's on the players currently at this point or the Oilers, I believe they have to match it, but it ultimately comes down on the player's decision. So those players might be trying to figure out like, do we want to go to freaking St. Louis? Yeah. Or do we want to, they, they have a, a timeline though, right? Isn't there a time limit? I, I believe so. Seven days or something like that? I believe so, yes. 
Um, I do believe so. But um, I mean, that compensation, that's not a lot to give up. A third round pick and a second round pick for two former first round pick players that, you know, but if I were those players, I'd be looking at it like, should I take the key, cheaper contract and keep playing with Leon Dreisaitl, Connor yeah. McDavid, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Evander Kane, all these other names? You're or do I want to go play in St. Louis with Robert Thomas and Jordan Cairo and uh, some other names like uh, Nick yeah. Letty? I think Nick Letty's still with him. Oh, my Lord, Nick <laughs> Letty. But, yeah, no, that was very exciting. And then continuing on, Ryan Getzlaff joins NHL Department of Player Safety on Wednesday. Cool. Hmm. I don't know what he's doing there, though, to be honest with you. I really didn't look into that, but is that really going to change anything? I don't believe so. But still pretty cool to hear that a more recent former hockey player is joining that group, right? So I like Getzlav. Good for him. Keep yeah. playing the game. Uh, an update. Sources say Milan Lucic has been training in New Jersey this summer as an attempt to con continue his playing career. Lucic is currently ineligible to return to the NHL. He was arrested in Boston last November. For assault and battery, plead not guilty, and charges were dropped in February when his wife invoked martial privilege, or privilege and declined to testify. Lucic took an indefinite leave of absence from the NHL Bruins after the arrest and did not return to the team. His one-year contract expired on June 30th. NHL Commissioner Gary Bemmon would need to clear Lucic to return to play, even though he has not been formally suspended by the league. Lucic entered the NHL slash NHL PA player assistance program. Um, yeah. So um, not, I mean, it's like it's news, but not really too much to talk about. Right. Just kind of get your shit together, Lucic. Right. And then you can keep on playing. Well said. Well said. Know, just get your shit together. Right. So um, no honorary Red Wing mention right now. We got to kind of uh, rework that because we did do. um I have an honorary Red Wings mention. I always got one ready to go, Zach. You want it? I do the people want it, Matt. How much more time you got over there, Bucko? I I have time for just this. Just right, this. So I want to hear it. We're gonna oh. make it quick, okay? Now this guy is not far removed at all from the Detroit Red Wings. So I expect every single person to remember this guy. And the only reason why I'm bringing him up is he recently just got signed. I believe it was a two a two way deal. Uh, the Dallas Stars picked him up. He hands down had the sickest equipment that I've seen a goalie rock. I'm talking about the one, the only, Magnus Helberg, ladies and gentlemen, number 45. <laughs> oh, he, he got for signed Detroit by Dallas. Runners. I did not see that. Yeah, he did. I don't know. He's probably going to spend. He's probably going to spend most of his time playing in uh, the AHL unless he oh. he comes up. I don't know, but. Did you um, – um, I forgot to mention this too, and I'm sorry, Carlo. Um, okay. Vrana, PTO with Washington Capitals. Yes. That blew my yes. mind. Oh, yeah. Sorry, yeah, I just wanted him. to throw that out there. Continue, though, Carlo. This goes to show you, guys, when you're lost, you can always go home. Mm -hmm. That's right. Take that for what it's worth. But anyways, uh, Magnus Helberg, a couple points here to make. Unreal goalie equipment. Loved when he played for us. The guy is a giant, literally a giant, coming in at 6'6", 209 pounds, just absolutely a, a unit of a man. Um, numbers, I mean, meh. They're not. Yeah, they're not good. They're not great. About the numbers. <laughs> they're not good. They're not great. But anyways, Magnus, we wish you the best of luck with with Dallas. Congrats on signing that deal, buddy. Red Wings face faithful will always love you. I certainly will. Keep rocking that sick equipment, and hopefully we uh, light you up this season. At some this point. guy over here. Sorry, there I you go. The wrong way. <laughs> Yeah, Magnus Helberg. Yeah, he, he was a hidden gem for us for a while. Um, he stole a couple games. He did steal a couple games. He did. He did. Um, so uh, hopefully it all works out for him over there, making that dough. Get that cash money. All right. Boom, boom. Boys, I think I think we're good to go. So final Not thoughts, Matt. You can go ahead and lay down the woodwork for everyone. Uh, my final thoughts are let's go Red Wings. I can't wait for Red Wings hockey and college football next Saturday. College football is back. So Boom. I'm very excited for that. I will definitely be watching. Go blue. I, I guess I'll go. Uh, go wings. Uh, it's August. I mean, there's we're just having fun here. Uh, but we're going to get into some good details and some good things moving forward, folks, because obviously we have some good times coming up with uh, the season and training camp and whatnot kicking off. So we hope that everyone's rested. We hope everyone's healthy. We hope everyone's ripped, jacked, nutritioned. Uh, I don't even know if that's a Ooh. word. 
But uh, point is, is let's get it going here. I think we're all pretty pumped up to get this season rocking and rolling here. So, um, and then Steve, whenever you want to put the cigar down and, you know, maybe sign a couple contracts, that'd be greatly appreciated. Um, if you need any help typing them up, let me know. I can do it for you free of charge. No problem. Let's just get these things done, please. <laughs> <laughs> good final thoughts up boys my final thoughts are let's go red wings let's go grand rapids griffins let's go toledo walleye we're getting very close to training camp preseason all of that good stuff uh let us know if you're going to traverse city for the prospect tournament we will not be attending man i did go last year um it's just a lot to to kind of get going and set up and yeah. just for kind of mm -hmm. like the weekend it is tough to kind of do that it's a tough drive to make too it was fun though it, it is it fun, fun for anyone who has never been to one. I highly recommend it. If you've never been to Traverse City, go. That is just an enjoyable place to be, being by the water and all the great atmosphere downtown and all that good stuff. So uh, a lot of woods and stuff. And the sand dunes are great, too, if you go over by Glen Arbor area, which is just a little west from there. But continuing on, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscri subscribe button if you, if you are new. But if you are returning, thanks for joining us once again. We really do appreciate it. Hit that thumbs, bu thumbs up button. Thumbs boys. Button. I can't speak, my hit goodness. Thumb. The big Sunday. thumb there. This one. If you haven't already, hit that thumbs up button. Let's get it to 20 that likes. That really does help us out. And you guys boom, have been boom, doing boom. a really good job at that. I'm going to try not to fumble my words anymore. Follow us on Apple. Follow us on Spotify. Do all the things. You can follow us on Twitter. Get us to 1K so we can do the giveaway for the special limited item that you could only get at a Detroit Red Wings game this past season. Go ahead and do that, and we will see y'all on the next one. Goodbye. See Peace, ya. guys. See ya. Bye-bye.